we are going to go over FRQB from, from the progress check for unit four. So that's what we're going to go over today. If you want to just wait and watch the video later, you're welcome to. Uh, but I also need you to unmute yourself if you don't understand something. Um, one thing I want to know is when you guys, um, when you guys, when I submit your score, do you get a, do you get an answer key? Yes. Okay. I didn't know if you got an answer key because I know I got an answer key when I'm grading it, but I didn't know if you got an answer key. Okay. So let's look at this one. And if we get through this one, I'll jump back onto um, FRQA, the one we had trouble with last last week. But I did. I was able to record um, seventh hour session on that. Um, so that's that. Um, okay. So here's the question, and it talks about the depth of a uh, river at a certain point is modeled by this function. Uh, where W is measured in feet and T is measured in time. And so this is the depth of the, of the river. So when we think of those steps, the first thing that I'm looking at is I know this is W and it's in depth and it's in feet. That way, if I know that part right there, then I know right away that if I go up a step, this would be W prime, this would be the rate of change in the depth, and it would be in feet per hour. And so that's going to help me. Like if I write that, then I can at least, um, if I know the stuff in blue and I just start building these steps, then when I start, when I'm asked to do certain things and explain certain things, I'm going to have a better chance at answering the questions because I know that like this last step would be in feet per hour per hour. And this would be W double prime. See, I don't think we use it in this one and we'll talk more about that in unit um, in unit five, but I just want you to know that those steps come into play often. Um, I, I, that diagram, um, I find it the easiest way to, to build answers and, um, and know that you differentiate to go up. When we get to unit six, we'll start going down the steps with integration, but we gotta, we gotta get through all of the differentiation stuff and then we'll start talking about what what happens when you go down and what's the process of going down those steps. But those steps are gonna play for the rest of the year. We're gonna use those. So the first thing is find W prime of eight, right? So if I'm in part A, I need to find W prime of eight. What I have to do is I have to, hold on one second, I gotta mark some people that have come in. Um, so if I'm looking at W prime of eight, I'm really looking, I got this piecewise function, but the only one I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use the one that W at T equals eight is equal to this function 10 times or minus one fifth t minus six squared. I don't actually use the top one on this one because eight is not in that part of the domain. So that's the only one I'm using. So when I find w prime in this case, um, I would have negative one fifth, I'd have times two, I'd have t minus six, I'd raise that to the first power. And I'll just put a one there because because I am using the chain rule, I wouldn't necessarily have to put the one there. If you didn't put that one there, you still would get it. Um, you'd still have the right answer, but that's W prime in that case. So when we find W prime of eight, we would have negative one fifth times two times eight minus six times one. And 
I don't have to do the arithmetic on that. I need no more arithmetic on this. If I want to, I can, I can, I can go and I can, I can do the arithmetic and say, oh, that's equal to negative four fifths. But I don't have to do that part in blue. I could just, this is the answer right here. And I would probably encourage you to leave that answer because negative four fifths isn't any better than what I have down. It's a same numerical value. And if you do the arithmetic and you simplify it incorrectly, then you'll be sad when you lose points on it. So I would encourage you not to simplify it. Now, here's where the, where um, notice it said using correct units. Well, so if you've done these steps, you already know the units is feet per hour. You actually already know, you actually already know the, the meaning behind it, right? It's the rate of change of the depth in feet per hour. So we actually could write that this is the rate of change of the depth of the river in feet per hour at time t equals eight. That's the meaning. And that's all you, and I got all that from those steps, right? I mean, those steps got me everything I need. They got me the units, they got me the meaning, and then I just have to use the t equals eight because I have to appeal to, to, to what the, um, to what it is. Now, if you had also said that the rate of change of the depth of the river is decreasing at four fifths feet per sec feet per hour at time t equals eight, that would have been equivalent. But I don't have to get cute on my answers. AP is not asking you to get cute. Essentially, they're they're kind of, the reason I came up with these steps is they're kind of trying to figure out, do you know that if you start at depth in feet, do you differentiate and get rate of change of the depth in feet per hour? That's really all they're trying to figure out. Do you even know what you've done? And, and so that's the answer to that. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, for part B, it's really kind of hard to, um, I thought it was hard to grade part B at this point in time because it started to, although I wanted to use it because it had this tangent line thing on there, I just didn't know how the best to grade it because it starts talking about concavity, but I also didn't want to rewrite this progress check. So um, take B with a grain of salt other than writing the tangent line, okay? so. Um, it's basically saying use the tangent line to the graph of W at T equals three to show that W of 3.5 is less than or equal to nine. So what we have to do is we have to write this tangent line. Um, when T is equal to three. So um, we would do um, W of T, is approximately equal to W prime of three times T minus three plus W of three. That's what we have to find. That's the tangent line, right? And then we're gonna put 3.5 into it and we're not gonna do arithmetic. So we have to do a little bit of work on this one. So what we have to do first is we have to find W prime of T when t is equal to three. Now, the reason I put t equals three on there is if I go back up, I'm now using, using the top function there, right? Because I'm not using the bottom function on this, on this part. I'm just using this top function. So if I find w prime, um, it's negative three halves. That's a constant that stays with us. The cosine turns into negative sine. You leave the pi t over six alone, but then I have to differentiate the inside that pi t over six, which is just pi over six. Right? Is everybody with me there? And so if I wanted to, I, 
if, if I wanted to clean it up, you wouldn't have to clean it up. But if I wanted to clean it up, I'm gonna write this as three pi over 12 times the sine of pi t over six. And I know I could write that as pi over four. Go to with me on that. Okay, now here comes the ultimate trick for you. Okay, so in, on an FRQ, this works on an FRQ. On an FRQ, you don't have to simplify numerical values. Okay, you don't have to simplify if you have just numbers in an equation, you don't have to do any simplification. If you want to, you certainly can, but you don't get any more credit for it. So you don't actually have in, in on the AP exam, their stance is you don't have to evaluate a trig function, except you do have to plug in the numbers. So what would I write for an answer just to be, um, it may be harder to, I don't know if it's harder to grade it actually, it's, it's probably just as easy to grade it. But what I would write is W of T is approximately equal to, or sorry, W of, actually I'm gonna write the, I'm going to write the whole thing because I'm using the tangent line. And so I'm going to use W of 3.5 because that's the value that they were concerned about with me down here like this is approximately equal to, I'm going to write this as pi over four sine 3.5 times pi over six times 3.5 minus three plus, now I got to go up here and I got to put in 3.5 into W. So I got to put in, I got 17 halves minus three halves cosine pi times 3.5 over six. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Because all the rest of it is just arithmetic, right? I mean, I just used all I did on that. All I did on that was I just used the values I got. And all the rest of it is just an evaluation that I could just evaluate using a calculator. That's a fine answer. And I know it's not simplified. I think it turns out to be like, I don't even remember what it turns out to be like to be actually, but I don't have to simplify it. Any questions on that? It's kind of a trick. I mean, as far as the AP exam goes, but that's why I get paid millions of dollars to teach you because I know some of these tricks. I don't get paid millions of dollars. Millions of dollars in compliments. Okay, everybody go to that. I move on. I'm still a bit, so you got the, the tangent line of W prime of three, and then you just add W of 3.5. I'm just, I'm confused. So the tangent line is to find a tangent line, you do F prime of A times uh, X minus A. Um, plus, oh wait, I should put in three into this. I should, sorry, I should put in, this is not right. I should put in three in here and here. There. I mean, I just used this so there's a slope, right? There's A. This is the point according to this up here. Does that make sense? So all I did is, and, and then I just put in 3.5 in for X because that's the X value I was supposed to approximate. And I know some of this simplifies. I think this part right here simplifies to zero. 
but I don't need to do that. I don't need to calculate that. Don't you have to show that W of 3.5 is less than nine? So wouldn't you have to simplify and calculate that? Yeah, that's what I thought too. But if I just write that, if my calculations are right, isn't it less than nine? I mean, right, I mean, so you, you could go through, if you're like, oh my God, I don't know if I did anything right, you could go through and actually do it. But if I did everything right, isn't it less than or equal to nine? Because they told me it was. So would I write that? Yeah, I'd write that. But I don't really have to. I mean, I mean, I mean, I, I would write the less than or equal to nine, but I don't have to simplify that because I know it's going to be less than or equal to nine because they told me it was supposed to be, and I know my calculations are right. So on a on a multiple choice, would that be an answer? No way. On a multiple choice, you'd have to go through and and do the arithmetic on it and come up with a with a value. On the free response, that's not the case. You don't have to do that kind of arithmetic. So that's kind of the trick that I would say that, yes, they told me I was supposed to be less than or equal to nine. So yeah, I'll just put it down there. I'm good. It may seem kind of shady, but yeah, so what? If you get, a, if you get full credit, right? Okay. Um, then we get to part C. And part C is, is the part that um, most people need help with actually, because in part C, you have to be formal. Um, so as, uh, as, as unsimplified as we were in, the, in, the, in part B, and we would have to simplify it in the, on, on a multiple choice, on part C, you, you don't have to show your work on how you can use L'Hopital's rule on a multiple choice, but on a free response, you actually have to show your work. So here's the way I would kind of answer this is if you're trying to find this limit as T goes to two and you got W of T minus T cubed plus one fourth over T minus two. Now, my, my thought is, is I'm over here going, hmm, let me see what happens. And if I put in two, I get zero on the bottom and I get zero on the top, right? That's what, that's what I'm going to get if I go through it. And I think to myself, oh, wait a minute. That's that. That's that. Uh, L'Hopital's rule thing. But now I have to be formal. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. I know that this, that this is, so if I just write equals zero over zero, that's wrong. That's bad mathematics. You can't just write zero over zero. You just don't want to do that. You don't want to write that. But here's the way you are, get around it is you say, okay, because the limit as x goes towards, or as t, sorry, t, as t goes towards 2 of w of t minus t cubed plus 1 fourth equals 0. And the limit as x goes towards 2 of t minus 2 equals 0. Use we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So what I'm doing is I'm establishing that each of those limits are equal to zero, which generates an indeterminate form. Now I can go through and say something like this. And I would say, then the limit as x as t, which is supposed to be a t up there too, as t goes towards two of w of t 
minus t cubed plus one fourth over t minus two is equal to the limit as t goes towards two of w prime of t minus three t squared over one. Okay, so now I've gotten a lot more formal, right? I've, 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 I've established that these two limits separately equal zero. So then I can use L'Hopital's rule. I've even declared that that's what I was gonna use. On this particular one, um, they don't say it. Sometimes they say use L'Hopital's rule and then, and then you don't have to declare it. You don't even have to establish it necessarily, but we have, we have asked you to do it, or we've asked you just to evaluate this limit. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, okay, well, then what I have is W prime of T at T equals two is equal to, and we actually had already calculated this. It was, it was this up here. So it was that negative three halves times negative sine pi t over six times pi over six. So what I would say is this is equal to, and you already done that work, um, but what I would do on this is I would write my answer then, and I would write negative, all right, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use that simplified version that I, had used, which was up here, was that um, pi over four. Um, so it was, it looks like this, pi over four sine um, What do you think I'd do with that? Plug it into a calculator. No, the no calculator question. Leave it. Why, Tommy? Because you don't have to simplify. Thank you. You don't have to simplify it. If it's a multiple choice, you do. But if it's a free response, you literally get to leave it like that and you're done. And you didn't have to do, but in the in this problem, you had to do this work up here, or you aren't even in the game, right? That you have to do that work, or you're not even in in play. You then can leave that like that. They don't care if you use the the reason AP does that is they say we don't care if they use arithmetic. We only care. On the free response, they don't necessarily care if they, or they're not test, I don't, it should say not care. They're testing you on whether you can do arithmetic. They are only testing you on your calculus knowledge. And your calculus knowledge is really done when you get to that much. Because you've established L'Hopital's rule in a formal way. You show that the limit, the, the top limit equals zero, the bottom limit equals zero. So now I can differentiate the numerator and the denominator separately. And then this is kind of the, 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 the uh, whipped cream on top of the Sunday that they say, okay, well, let's just throw the number in there now. Could you simplify it? Sure, but it, it doesn't matter if you simplify it. Okay. Any questions on that problem? So if you don't do the, the formal stuff at the beginning of this, but you do get the correct answer at the end, you don't get, you don't even get the point for the answer. You don't get the point for the answer. No. Okay. And, and that's where, um, at least historically on the last few pro that, that sometimes they give you some, some partial credit, but, um, this particular um, 
uh, whenever they've tested L'Hopital's rule on free response questions, they're really looking for a formal, um, they're looking for a formal explanation of why you can use it. And most people fall apart because they do that. They do that part right there. And as soon as you write that equals zero over zero, essentially you've offended mathematicians in such a way that they say you cannot recover. Because that's offensive. That's like a swear word. Okay, that's like a math swear word. <laughs> so how do you get around it? You do all this work over here in your head and it's you, not me. So we'll get you some hair there. Okay. Actually that's JC. <laughs> Cause of the purple hair. So there you go. It's maybe a little longer. JC in a couple of months when, when she takes the AP exam. <laughs> all right. At that time, I'll be bald. Oh, Lord have mercy. Hold on. That will be in solidarity. Um, okay, so what else do you want me to go over? Because we have 18 minutes left, and I'll do anything you want me to do at this point. I had a question about um, the L'Hopital's rules problems on the second multiple choice. Okay. Um, question is on um, 15 and 16. Okay, hold on, let me get to them here. Okay. So if you go through, you get, you know, limits is x to zero, you get to the top, you get zero, bottom, you get zero. And if you differentiate, you get zero and zero again. Yep. So would you have to then differentiate that equation again? So exactly. Do, okay. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it. it's a perfect question, Tommy. So if you get this, you get zero over zero. And on, on the multiple choice, it wouldn't be, it, it, you could write this and, and nobody would, nobody would fault you, right? Because it's multiple choice and nobody checks your work on multiple choice, but what you'd get is this. So then you'd say, okay, well, the limit as X goes to zero is e, is two X over um, sine X, which is still zero over zero. Right. But if you then, so anytime you get zero over zero, you could, just differentiate it. Well, now that's two over one, which is two. Okay, and then for 16, it's similar. Yep. So the first time you, I, I think you get infinity over infinity, which is you also do. indeterminate. Yep. So then you differentiate, and then I think it would still be infinity over infinity. Yep. So would you have to differentiate that one again too? It's essentially the same thing. Yeah, you'd probably have to do it again, right? Okay. But see how it's cubed? Mm -hmm. So it's going to go to uh, 3x squared, which is still, and, and, and the e to the x is never really going to go away. I mean, this is just e to the 3x times 3. Um, and then the next time you do it, it's going to be 6x, and you're going to have e to the 3x times three times three, right? Mm -hmm. And then the next time you're gonna get six and you're gonna get e to the three x times three times three times three, right? Yeah. Well, now if you're so, doing the limit as x goes towards infinity, you get six divided by infinity, which is zero. Okay. But you have to get there, right? I mean, you have to just differentiate. And now if you were doing this um, on a free response, it is super important that you write that limit in there each time. 
if you don't write that limit in there each time, suddenly you are not, um, you, you are writing bad mathematics. On, on, a free, on a multiple choice, you wouldn't have to write that because you know what you're going to do with it, right? But on the, the, the key point is when you're doing the free response, you're communicating math is what you're doing. And so you have to communicate math. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Anything else anybody wants to do on these? For FRQ part B, the second question, I like, I didn't really understand all the stuff with like velocity and acceleration. You weren't though. supposed to. Oh, were you not supposed to do that part? No, nope, you weren't supposed to do that one. Okay. That makes yeah, sense. no, that's the, that's so, so I remember I skipped um, on the, uh, if you look at back at like the Delta math, how I numbered it, we didn't do 4.2 and 4.3. We are going to do those, but not till after we do unit five, because Delta math does it in that order. And it was just too hard to get you practice. And then, and so we'll go back to that. Um, and we'll actually, just so you know, um, we'll use the steps where this is position, this is velocity, and this is acceleration. And, and think about it in terms of a car, this would be in miles, right? Your speedometer, which is your, uh, which is your velocity is in miles per hour and acceleration is measured in miles per hour per hour. So we'll get back to that, but you didn't have to know that right now. It's not a, it'll be on the unit five test is where I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add that. And unit five is, is super long. Like we will be doing that for a long time. Unit five has 12 sections. If I add um, the two from unit four, that would be 14 different sections. And unit four, we only did four sections. So unit five is gonna be pretty, pretty broad. What else can I do? Anything? Can we do question three yeah. on this one? So, so again, this is a perfect one to, to kind of unpack is with the steps. So uh, a tire is leaking air and has an initial pressure of 30 pounds uh, per square inch. Uh, the function F of P models the amount of time in T hours. It takes the air pressure, the tire to reach P, PSI. What are the units for F of P? Um, so, I think this is F prime of P, okay? Um, so let me make sure that's right. So this one is kind of, um, this one's kind of maybe counterintuitive, but it tells you that this is, um, F of P is um, in hours, right? And you know P is in, um, stands for essentially the PSI. Does that make sense? So then F prime of P is hours per PSI because of how this goes, how that's measuring, how it's measuring up. And it has to do with right here, knowing that like when it tells you um, this part right here, oops. Line. When it tells you that right there, F of P is in hours. That kind of builds that first step. Does that make sense? So then 
when you're asked for f prime of p, at the very least, you should know it's hours per something. Because then the top step would be hours per something per something, right? Does that make sense? Well, looking at these answers, this is the only one that gets the per, right? So it's so. So that's kind of the way I would unpack that. Now, if they had given you like hours, I don't know what else they could have given you, but that's how I would unpack that. That's exactly how I would um, use that step diagram to come up with a, the way, how to organize your thoughts. That's why I think this step diagram is so vital in trying to figure things out. Because once you put what's given, you know, this is what was given, and this is what you were asked to do. So then we just, um, actually these two things were given, and then you know what was asked of you, and then you can do it. And notice, um, just to, to relate it, notice P is in there, and so it's per PSI. Um, remember back up on this problem, um, T was in hours, right? So notice that T fits there, here's it is, oh, there's where it shows up, right? So that kind of gives you a clue of how you unpack that. Does that make sense? That's why I think, I mean, honestly, that's why kids come back to me every year saying the steps, the step diagram is the best thing going because they can, they got a fighting chance when they get into con contextual problems, which are much harder than other things. I have not been monitoring the chat. So hopefully there, I didn't miss anything bad. Uh, okay. Let's see, oh, we only have, so if you have more questions on this, you don't have to do the test tomorrow by the time you, by the time we start, come to class, you could, you're welcome to, but, um, so, um, cause Fiduma asked me um, if we can do more problems on this and I'll be glad to do more of these. So if you haven't done this, um, this is that separate one uh, progress check that I made um, because I think I can't remember who asked me to to do it or not. Uh, it might have been Joe actually might have asked me to to make another one. And so here it is. So do that, and then I will answer those questions tomorrow and 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 get them on there. Okay. All right. So you have you have a minute to get to your seventh hour. So it's passing time now. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alquist. You got it. Um, I'm here. Yeah, I got you here. Okay.